Hello world, welcome to edupediaworld.com. In this video, I am going to cover the topic named Generations of Computers. Generation in computer terminology simply is a change in technology which a computer is or was being used where generation includes both hardware and software which together make up an entire computer system. The development of electronic computers till date can be divided into five generations so far depending upon the different technologies used. Now let's have a look at the five generations of computers. The first generation was from 1942 to 1955. They use vacuum tubes as the basic components for memory and circuitry for central processing unit. Machine language was being used as the programming languages. Some examples of that era of computers were electronic numerical integrator and computer, electronic discrete variable automatic computer. These were the first one to use binary operations. Then comes universal automatic computer. It was the first mainframe computer for general business use. Then international business machines 701 system was introduced which also was nicknamed as Big Blue. It was designed for scientific work and research. Then comes international business machines system 650 which was IBM's as well as world's first successful commercial computer. The features include vacuum tubes were there uh, as the only electronic components available during those days. The technology made possible to make electronic digital computers. These computers could calculate data in milliseconds. Batch processing operating system was introduced and as peripheral or input and output devices punched cards, paper tapes and magnetic tapes were introduced. But the computers were very large in size and so consumed a lot of energy. They heated very soon due to thousands of large vacuum tubes and so air, continuous air conditioning was required. Very low speed as limited programming capabilities, constant maintenance was required, very limited data storage was there because of the capabilities of the input and output devices. Obviously was non-portable, non-versatile and very much risky to the faults. As you can see from the pictorial representation, the huge systems were there with thousands of vacuum tubes required constant maintenance and the processing also was very, very slow. Now comes second generation of computers. That era starts from 1955 to 1964. They were based on transistors which were much smaller than the vacuum tubes. Magnetic core was being used as the primary memory. Magnetic tapes or magnetic disks were used as secondary storage. It was based on assembly language for the programming. The examples include again international business machines 1794 and 1400 series. They also are known as system 360 and was the first family of compatible computers ever developed. Were highly successful as standalone or as a peripheral system in many companies. 
then comes control data corporations 164 and 360 series they were one of the first computers or pioneer of computer companies founded in 1957 in fact the first computer 164 was there which was delivered to the united states navy bureau of ships it produced a complete line from workstations to mainframes and also led to the manufacturing of supercomputers in the later generation. Features include they are smaller in size now, require less energy and were not heated as the vacuum tubes are replaced by the transistors now. They are more reliable, better portability and accuracy also is much more improved. Better speed as input-output devices are faster and could calculate data in microseconds now. So the commercial use also is, is much more improved. But still cooling system as well as constant maintenance was required. Commercial production was difficult as they so they only were reserved for the specific purposes. They were costly and less versatile but still was a very good replacement to the first generation of computers. As you can see from the pictorial representation things are bit simpler now as the vacuum tubes are replaced by the transistors also you can see from the pictorial representation different input output devices can be seen there as the card readers are there tape drives were there the central processing unit and console of that time and the line printer also you can see from here so now comes third generation of computers that era starts from 1965 to 1971. They use integrated circuits now in place of transistors where a single integrated circuit has many transistors, resistors and capacitors along with the associated circuitry. In this generation, the remote processing, time sharing, multi-programming operating systems were used. So instead of that batch processing in which the huge lines were there, persons are waiting for their turn to come. Now comes the concept of time sharing and multi-programming operating systems. So the structured low-level programming languages are there such as C, COBOL, Fortran for the programming. The examples of third generation systems include International Business Machine System 360 which represented the first basic reorganization of the electronic computer by IBM. Then comes Honeywell's regulator companies acquired mini computers line which gave a serious competition to IBM. Then programmed data processor which was a digitally introduced mini computer of that era and these machines lingered on for many years. Then international business machines system 370 was introduced which was an upgradation to system 360. Then comes Tele Denmark largest telephone company in Denmark's system which introduced American owned telephony exchange and mobile telephony as well. The features include they are smaller in size, more reliable, used less energy, so vice versa produce less heat. Now they could calculate data in nanoseconds, used their fan for heat discharge to prevent damage, so maintenance cost also becomes less now. Good storage, less expensive, accuracy is much better and they are totally general purpose and versatile. Now for the input devices, mouse and keyboard were there instead of huge punching cards and magnetic tapes. But still the systems were very costly, air conditioning was required 
and highly sophisticated technology was needed for the manufacturing of integrated chips. As you can see from the pictorial representation, the diagram for the computer is much more better now as the things are simpler. So now comes fourth generation of computers. That era starts from 1971 to 1980. They use large scale integration and very large scale integration circuits having thousands of integrated chips, transistors and other associated circuits on a single chip which in fact led to the invention of microprocessors. Time sharing, real time networks, distributed operating systems were used, all the high level programming languages like C, C++, DBase, SQL like that is structured query language etc were introduced. The examples include Apple Macintosh which in fact was the pioneer of microcomputer then becomes international business machines first personal computer in 1981. Then the Cray 1 Cray research designed and manufactured first supercomputer with processor speed of 75 megahertz making it the world's fastest vector processor although even nowadays our notebooks are much more faster than that speed but it was a great innovation of that generation. The features include they are more powerful and reliable, smaller in size with very fast processing, have their own fan for heat discharging so no air conditioning is required. These are the cheapest among all the generations as use of personal computers was introduced, pipeline processing concept of internet was given all types of high level languages are supported. So you can see from the pictorial representation the computers are much more simpler and are in the shape which almost everyone has in his or her home now. So now comes the fifth generation or, or the last generation of computers. This period starts from 1980 till date and beyond. Now the very large scale integration turns into ultra large scale integration resulting in the production of microprocessor chips having 10 million electronic components. It is based on the technique of artificial intelligence, simply making computers to think like humans to be much, much, much more like humans and can make them understand spoken words and imitate human reasoning. So it focuses on the development of true artificial intelligence as well as natural language processing. Advancements in parallel processing were there, superconductor technology is being introducing, availability of very powerful and compact computers at especially at affordable prices. So it includes robotics, neural networks or the game playing stations, the Xboxes, even the expert systems to make decisions in real life situations. As for example, the robots are giving very tough competition to the humans in the games like chess. They are the biggest challengers of humans now and the examples, more examples in computers include all our desktop, laptop, notebook, ultra books, chromebooks, etc. They all belong to this fifth generation. Thank you for watching video on edupediaworld.com.